there are a lot of habit trackers on the App Store, and figuring out which one is best for you takes a lot of time. So in this video, I will help you figure out which of the highest rated habit tracking apps would work best for you so you don't have to waste all of that time and get straight into tracking your habits. Now this comparison will have a points system, meaning we start with five points for the basic things, which we will call the non-negotiables. And they will be the following. Reminder notifications, being able to make an account for data backup, flexible schedules, streaks, and summary of some sort, like graphs or statistics. If a non-negotiable feature is missing, I will deduct two points, which will hit extra hard. For any extra features, I will give them one point, and for any features that are missing or don't work properly, I deduct one point. And just to emphasize as well, I am only talking about the free features of each app. Also, after going through the features of each habit tracking app, I will also summarize what points they have and, and who the app is good for, in my opinion. So firstly, we are going to start with the app called Prodi. It has a 5.0 rating on the App Store. And let's just start with the non-negotiables first. So first of all, you must have an account. And if you get a new phone or uninstall the app and reinstall it again, all of your data will be there when you log back in. The fact that you must have an account and you can't do it without really depends. Maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't want to sign up for every app that you have, but I think this is A+, because it's better than not having any backup feature whatsoever. They do have habit reminders, which is very nice. They also have streaks, and they have insights for all habits. However, they're only weekly insights because the monthly and yearly ones are not free. You can also view individual habit insights for a month. So I would just remove a point from that. Also when setting custom days, it is possible, but they're not as flexible as I'd like them to be. So minus one point from that. It doesn't have widgets, which is very unfortunate. Now let's talk about the pluses. So first of all, you can set an area of life for each habit. Now another feature I found that was quite unique is the accountability check-in. So this just keeps you accountable for visiting the app every day to check off your habits and tracking that as well. Their interface is very clean. I personally really like it. You can also set a dark mode, which is a very nice feature to have. You can also record a reason to why you want to build the habit to motivate yourself. There's also a journal section which has daily reflections if you are that kind of person. Personally, I am not, but it's a good feature to have nonetheless. Now, another really cool feature that this app has is habit stacks. So basically, what a habit stack is, it's basically helping you break down more intimidating or bigger habits. So let's say, for example, your habit is going to the gym. The way you can create a habit stack for that is the first step is putting on clothes, then it's driving to the gym, and then third is finishing the workout. You can also add an emoji for each habit stack because you're also going to measure how many minutes each part of the habit stack takes. This, this is a feature that really stood out for me. And when it comes to habit stacks, the insights also show you how much time you've spent on that habit. In summary, I think Prodi would be great for someone who has maybe one or a few bigger habits that require more steps to complete which makes them quite intimidating. And they don't, don't seem to stick because of that. You can use the habit stacking feature to make them stick. The next habit tracking app I'm going to talk about is the Loop Habit Tracker, which I also mentioned in my previous video about setting an aesthetic and functional home screen for your Android phone. This habit tracker app has a 4.8 rating. Now let's start with the non-negotiables. They have reminders that you can set up for each habit. They have very flexible schedules. Let's say some habits can be set for four times a week or three times a week. They also have detailed graphs and statistics, but only for singular habits, not in general. So I'd probably give minus one point for this one. 
instead of the minus two points for a missing non-negotiable. They also have streaks. There is no chance of making an account. So there is no backup if you uninstall it, unless you export a full backup of your data yourself, which is a more complicated process and a lot of people don't prefer to do that. So that, unfortunately, is minus two points. Now let's get to the features that they have. Now when I mentioned that they have reminders for each habit, not only this, you can also set the reminder notifications to become sticky notifications. So if you're a person who tends to swipe notifications away or reminders away, and even sometimes you do it and you don't notice, then this is a great feature to have. Also, the first day of the week can be changed. So if you're living in a country where the week starts on a Sunday, you can leave it like that. Or if the week starts on a Monday, like for me, I consider the first day of the week a Monday. That's what I'm going to change it to. I really love their very, very simple, straightforward interface. It's very easy to use. You instantly know what's going on. It's simple. It doesn't overwhelm you whatsoever. You can also hide completed habits. And this is great for if you do have a lot of habits and it's kind of overwhelming looking at them sometimes. So every habit that you tick off, it disappears for the day. Now they also have habit scores. So the score gets higher every time you do the habit and the score gets lower whenever you don't. And it counts your whole habit history for each habit. You can also set custom colors for each habit. So you can make a gray theme or you can make everything blue or you can make a rainbow theme, which is personally what I'm going for. They also have a night mode. If you switch the app to night mode, then all the colors turn into pastel colors. You can also make your dark theme extra black. I also love that they have a question section that appears on your reminder notification. Like for example, did you drink two and a half liters of water today? If it makes it easier understanding what the habit is that you are supposed to complete. Now the types of habits that you can track are yes and no and measurable, which is also very important to have. I think yes or no is not good enough sometimes when it comes to certain habits. The option of having a measurable habit is very important to me. Now, I cannot forget to mention this feature because I truly love it, but they have a lot of widgets and they're all free. They have six widgets actually. I love this feature. I was using the loop habit tracker wi widget in the phone aesthetic setup video that I just mentioned earlier and it has been great. You can also set the widgets to become transparent, which is really cool. And you can do that in the settings. Now the type of widgets they have is completed summary targets, streaks, scoreboard, history, quick daily check marks, and frequency. In summary, I think Loop would be best for people who want the easiest, simplest, most straightforward, no dings and whistles type of habit tracker. And they love their widgets, which I personally really do at the moment. Also, I really hope this point system is helping you guys out. If so, let me know in the comments because I can definitely make more of these kinds of videos in the future. Next habit I'm going to talk about is Habit U which has a 5.0 rating on the Play Store. And again, we are just gonna go through the non-negotiables first. Now, first of all, there are general reminders to track your habits and individual habit reminders as well. They have streaks. So there's a number next to each habit to tell you how long your streak is. How many days have you done the habit? There's also flexible schedules and graphs and statistics. Now, things that are minuses in this app. The only way you can track your habits is a yes or a no option. You can't mark missed habits older than two days, but it shouldn't be an issue if you can't consistently use the app. And that's why it's good to have those reminders on. Now, the colors of the habits can only be changed depending on the area of life that you chose for it. Also, there are no widgets. Now let's go through the pluses of the app. So they have habit ideas and habit suggestions when creating some. So if you want to make a list of habits you want to start, but you're kind of having a block, this is a good way to start. But remember not to get habit happy because you can go through the list and be like, oh, I want to do this, this, I want to avoid this and this, and it just kind of gets way too exciting. 
but realistically you can't build so many habits at once so yes start small their interface is quite modern it's very light but it's not the most simple interface out there if you like to keep yourself accountable you can also add a note and picture proof to each habit that you complete. They also have a night mode, which is always very nice. Also, when creating the habit, you can set if it's a good habit or a bad habit. So bad habit is counting days you don't do the habit, you're like trying to avoid it. And then of course the good habit is the one you want to build. You can set times of day for each habit. You're also able to snooze a habit for when you want to take a break. For example, you're on vacation and you can't complete the habit of, let's say, tidying up your apartment in 10 minutes because you're not even home. You can set an area of life for each habit. You can add a reason to why you want to build each habit. It just kind of gives you a reminder of why you're doing this in the first place. What's the end goal? There's also a journal and simple to-do list notes section. Now, when it comes to habit you, I think it's best for people who are really focusing and also breaking bad habits and they want to journal their progress. Now, we can all agree that each habit we try to build or break is part of a bigger picture that we have set for ourselves, our goals. And tracking those habits is just one of those ways to reach your goals. Regarding this, I do have a free full guide about the five ultimate steps to accomplish your goals and not to get overwhelmed during the whole process. And it has quite a few tips plus some mistakes to avoid when planning for the long term. And if you'd like to check it out after this video, there will be a link down in the description box. The next habit tracking app we're going to talk about is Habit Tracker. It's literally called Habit Tracker and has a 4.7 rating in the Play Store. So let's go through the non-negotiables first. They do have reminders, which are general reminders to check out the app every day. They have very flexible habit scheduling. So you can pick certain days in a week or you can pick an X amount of times per week, month or even year. So, so far, this has been the most flexible habit scheduling that I've seen. They have very simple statistics with a calendar as well. They have streaks. You can also back up data by signing up with your Google account or your Facebook account. So the non-negotiables are there. Now, what are the minuses? First of all, no widgets. There is a permanent dark mode. You cannot turn it off. If you want a lighter interface, you cannot have that. And you can only have maximum 10 free habits. After that, you're going to have to pay for the app. Now, what are the plus sides of this app? You can also change the start of the week, which is always good. Habits can also be separated by the time of day and their time periods can also be changed. You can also have positive or negative habits. So as I mentioned with the previous app, negative habits are habits where you're counting down the days of where you avoid it. And then the positive ones are the days you are completing the habit. You can also change the color and the icon of each habit. So there is some customization when it comes to your habits. You also have the option of pausing habits. So as I mentioned before, having the option of pausing habits is great because, for example, if you're going on vacation and you don't want to break your streak because you've been very good, you can still do that. Now, when it comes to the habit tracker app, I think it would be best for people who are looking for simplicity yet want their habits to be very flexible and prefer them being separated by the time of day. And the last habit we're gonna go over is called Habit Full, which is rated a 4.5 in the Play Store. So let's go through the non-negotiables. You can make an account for cloud backup. You can also set a pin lock and you can sync between devices. And when it comes to creating an account, you can connect it with your Facebook or email. They do have a street counter, which is always good. They have reminder notifications and they have graphs and they have very flexible ways to set habit frequency. So the number of times this habit should be completed in a day, week, month. So that flexibility to set the frequency is very useful. All right, let's go through the minuses. So first of all, I'm just gonna admit it, the interface feels dated and clunky, but that's just my opinion. That's how I feel using the app. There is an inspirational quotes section, but 
the quotes didn't even show up for me. I kind of also find this feature useless and it just adds clutter to the app. If I want inspirational quotes, I would just get another app for it or something. Or have a notes page with my favorite quotes that I've hand chosen, written to the notes app, and then add it to my home screen. There's also a general discussion section, but it's just super messy and cluttered. People using this app probably don't even use this. Maybe they do, but I don't see a reason to use this whatsoever. Now when it comes to widgets, they don't have them unless you have a premium account. But like I said, this video is only mentioning the features you can get for free. So the widgets are premium. Unfortunately, the limit to how many habits you can have at once for free is five. After that, you will need a premium account. All right, now let's get down to the pluses. You can change colors for each habit. You can change the app to a light or dark theme. You can change the start of the week. You can also add notes to each day of habit tracking. So you can add whatever you feel, whatever emotions or thoughts are going through your head or any other notes. You can also change the view of the app from a monthly view to a weekly view when the app starts up. There's also customizable reminder snooze links. Now, what are the ways you can track your habits? There is a yes or no option. There's a numeric option and you can connect your Google Fit and you can track the data from there. Now, the next feature I'm gonna mention is one of my favorites for this app, which is that you can set a target for each habit. Let's say 66 days. So if you have a 66 day habit streak, then you've reached your target. Now for Habit Bowl, I think it's best for people who want a lot of customization and also have a Google Fit. So if you do have a Google Fit, then I think this is the habit tracker that you should definitely try out. Now, after going through this comprehensive comparison, which one do you think you're gonna go for? For me right now, I think I'm gonna go with Loop because it has a lot of nice widgets and it's very simple and straightforward. But you might not care for that one because at the end of the day, everyone has different preferences and that is what makes the world interesting. And also that's why we have so many different habit tracking apps. I hope you have a very productive week and I will see you next time. Ciao.